Alright ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be our next video on environmental science and specifically going over ecology. Let's get started on this next video. So if we were to go through and look in a forest, what is going to live in that forest? We might think there's going to be some conifers, some pine trees. Maybe we'll see an owl. Maybe we'll go through and see a rabbit. Maybe we'll go through and see a songbird. Maybe we'll go through and see a deer, a bee, and maybe even a fungi. But if we're thinking about what lives in a forest, well, we're really going through and thinking about ecology. And as we go through and interact with our environment and interact with the ecosystem, we have to go through and think about how organisms interact with each other and with their environment. So what is ecology then? Well, ecology, it's just the study of how the interactions between living organisms and their surroundings in the biosphere occur. When we go through and think about ecology, well, we're thinking about these environments that we interact with on a daily basis. Now, some of them might be foreign, like this, you know, tropical rainforest that we see here. Or maybe this one here where we see these mountains and the Tetons. But when we think about these forests, they're around us all the time, and we as humans are part of this ecological unit and part of this biosphere. Now, if we're thinking about what the biosphere is, well, it's going to consist of all life on Earth and all parts of Earth in which life exists. So this is going to include the land, the water, the atmosphere, etc. All of those things that we interact with on a daily basis. Now, life on Earth is going to occur in a hierarchy of levels, and different kinds of scientists are going to study these different levels from a single cell to an entire forest. So when we go through and think about ecology, we have to think about it in terms of this hierarchy. Now, when we're thinking about levels of organization, we're going to start off with species or an individual first. An individual is going to be our smallest level of organization. And a species is just a group of individuals, or an individual is just a group of things who interbreed and produce fertile offspring. As we move up the chain, we're going to move into a population. And all population is, it's members of the same species that live in the same area. We're then going to move up into community. And community is all the populations within that particular area. As we move further, we're going to get into an ecosystem. Now, an ecosystem is, is it's going to be all the living things and the physical environments within a particular area. And then finally, we're going to go through and get to biosphere. And that's what we just went through and discussed. It's going to be all parts of Earth that host life. So when we're thinking about hierarchy here, we go from individual to population to community to ecosystem to biosphere. And this hierarchy is important for us to think about and learn in ecology because it's going to influence what we go through and look at and what we go through and study. Now, you probably learned that a cell is the basic unit of life, and most biology books are going to describe cells, tissues, organs, and organ systems as the four levels of organization for a multicellular organism. Now, when we think about ecology, ecology study life at these levels. When we think about the most basic level of study for an ecologist, it's going to be an individual organism. And a species is going to be individuals who interbreed and produce fertile offspring here. And remember, when we go through and look at species, right, how do organisms go through and speciate? Let's look at this scenario. Species that live in the same environment and reproduce as a population here are going to go through, and they're going to encounter maybe some sort of environmental change that separates those species. And when that goes through and occurs, we're going to see a physiological or morphological change. So if we look at the scenario here, over time, the species are separated and they're no longer going to have the capability to reproduce, in this case, because of this canyon. As we move further on here, eventually the species are going to come in contact with each other. These two populations come in contact, but they've speciated. They can no longer reproduce because they've been separated for a very long period of time here. So when we talk about species, remember, they have to be able to produce fertile offspring. So when we go through and look in our evolution unit and talk about speciation, we will discuss this a little bit more. But at this level, the science of ecology is going to be going through and describing the relationships between individual organisms and their environments. And this is going to be the smallest unit or the smallest level of organization in ecology. 
Now, next is going to be a population. Remember, the population is just members of the same species. Now, a common example that we see is the golden toads in Costa Rica. And in a lot of biology textbooks and in a lot of biology classes, we'll see this because this is what scientists go through and study a lot. Now, if we look at this, well, what is the population in this picture here? Well, it doesn't include the trees, it doesn't include the grasses, it doesn't include the lily pads here, just the frogs. It's all of those individuals that make up the same species and they live in that same area at the same time. Now, we can think about maybe a dog. If we have a bunch of fleas that are living on this dog, well, they're the same population of fleas. They're capable, they're all of the same species, they're capable of reproducing, and they all live within that same area within that dog. So when we're thinking about these areas, right, and we're thinking about these populations, we're thinking about them in scale. We can see very small populations or very large populations, and we can see very small and large environments in which they live in. Now, all the populations in a particular area are going to be a community. And this population of golden toads we went through and talked about, right, they're the population that exists within that community. And that community might include now the grasses, the trees, the lily pads, all the other things that are alive within that environment. Now, if we think about interactions between bees and flowers, well, they're a community, right? And when we go through and look at this, we're studying community ecology because there's a relationship between the bees and the flowers. Now, students commonly go through and confuse this because they think about, well, what about your own community, the community of the people that you live in? And when we say community, right, and the neighborhood that we live in, we're really thinking about a population because we're really only talking about humans there. So it's important for us to go through and differentiate this, right? It's all of the populations and all of the different species living in that area. Now, community ecology is going to be how we go through and study the different species and their interactions within a given area. Now, these interactions could be simple, like our bee and our flower uh, example. We have to think about how the single bee might pollinate a single flower. Or we think it can be really, really complex. It might be how entire herds of animals interact and as they migrate through Africa, how they go through and interact with their environments there. So uh, ecologists are going to go through and study this and they're going to do community ecology and look at the different populations to go through and better understand how they're going through and interacting with their environment. All right, so now what we're going to look at is an ecosystem. An ecosystem is going to be all the living things within a physical environment and within that particular area. So if we look at this picture here, we're going to see all the plants. We're also going to see all these different animals. So let's go through and look at some of the organisms here. We have a crane, we have a frog here. We have a population of fish. And they're going to be living things. But we're also going to see things like plants, maybe this swamp grass, these lily pads, maybe this elodea here. So if we look at this, we also want to think about scale, like we talked about in our previous section. We can also see ecosystems and microscopic ecosystems, such as bacteria, protozoa, and viruses that exist within this environment. So when we're going through and thinking about this, we're thinking about the living things and the physical environment in which they live in, but we also have to go through and think about scale here. Now, ecosystem ecology involves studying the living and non-living components of a system together. And with this work, ecologists can often reveal patterns in energy or nutrient flow that may be controlled or changed by living or non-living factors. So an ecosystem ecologist that is studying the disappearance of the golden toad would consider the effects, not only the living things, but also factors such as weather, climate, and water availability that's going through and affecting how these toad populations are either increasing or decreasing. Now lastly here, we're going to see the biosphere. And the biosphere is going to include all parts of Earth that host life. And this is going to be with all of its organisms and environments here. So if we go through and look at this, what are going to be components of the biosphere that we see on Earth? Well, if we think about some of the environments that we see, there's deserts on Earth. We have these Arctic zones, tropical grasslands, coral reefs. We see these rainforests. And it might even include a city where humans go through and live in. But when we think about each of these components here, we think of them as biomes. And we'll go through and discuss that in a little bit more detail. 
when we're thinking about the biosphere, we're thinking about all of these biomes put together to go through and make up this one earth component. So as we go through and look at ecology, we want to go through and think about these levels of organization here. And this is going to be fundamental to going through and understanding everything we have in our ecology unit. So as we go through and progress, be thinking about individuals, populations, communities, ecosystems, and the biosphere as a whole, so that way you have a better understanding of this entire unit as a whole. All right, so did you guys learn? Well, did you learn a couple of things? Did you guys go through and learn about what ecology is and what it's the study of? Did you guys go through and learn about the hierarchy of ecology? And then lastly, did you learn about the individual components of each? This is going to be the end of the video. Well, we'll see you all in class tomorrow.